Hi, it's Heath, and we're here for another Media Diet Comics commentary. Today we're going to be talking about the first three issues of a five-issue miniseries focusing on the character of Juggernaut. Recently published by Marvel. This is numbers one, two, and three, and I think the issues are dated October to December. Looks like we've got November, we've got December, and we've got January. First comic I've read actually dipping already into next year. And this miniseries is written by Fabian Nicieza, or Nicieza, if you know how to pronounce it, feel free to correct me in the comments below, and drawn by Ron Garney. And interestingly, really good book. Extremely impressive. An impressive handling of the character, an impressive storyline unfolding just over these three issues, and a lot of potential for the character, who I've enjoyed in the past, but didn't actually think had this much potential. And so right on to Fabian Nicieza for writing such good comics. Reminds me a little bit of a couple of things that happened in the early 80s. I think 83, 84, we had a Hercules um, miniseries and the Thing ongoing series. Kind of quieter, scaled down books for those characters. And, and this miniseries so far is striking me in a very, in a very similar way. But an interesting, interesting story unfolding. A comment on the art. Um, a little bit of Garney's style reminds me of where I felt John Romita Jr. was and perhaps was going um, rather than, than his current style. And so good, good art from Ron Garney and an appropriate degree of fantastic and realistic, um, cartoony and, and, you know, almost photo, actually not at all photorealistic, um, but darkness and light, like a wonderful, wonderful tempered art style uh, for the tenor and tone of the comic. Um, an interesting, interesting storyline. Uh, first of all, a couple of interesting tidbits. Um, each issue opens up with a relatively uh, scarce or sparse introduction, but each one introduces or includes the text, nothing can stop the juggernaut. This one says, except himself. This one says, except an immovable object. And, and this one says, except a spider's web. So if you're making a list of things that can stop juggernaut, this mini series will help you for sure. The series opens with Juggernaut, who is a villain named Cain Marco, kind of a gray character now, villain turned good, a good villain. The comic actually addresses that in some dialogue, but he's working for damage control. Um, and damage control is a, a fun thing that has been kind of handled in passing, has had its own miniseries in the past. Um, but the idea behind damage control is that it's the contractor's organization or construction organization that cleans up after all the superpowered or superhero battles throughout the Marvel Universe. And so they come in to tidy things up and cart it away um, after all the damage is done. So Juggernaut works for them in demolition, tearing down buildings. And he's tearing down a number of buildings that have been condemned and encounters a bunch of youth who are squatting in the buildings. And so doing, encounters a young woman who goes by the name D-Cell who's able to slow things down. And, and so far she's used her powers being kind of a street kid, uh, mostly for performance art and pranks. Um, she mentions a couple of projects in which she she actively live streams online and so she has an online and social media presence through which she communicates with her base and followers um, but she talks about a couple of projects in which she slowed the decline of an elevator so it took however long and during some parade I think you know caused confetti to fall more slowly and so using her powers uh, mostly for art and for humor. Um, some debate whether she's a mutant, not a mutant. Um, she indicates that, that her powers come through uh, mutation rather than being born with it with an X gene. Um, but then there are some people, I think, in Damage Control later in the series so far who uh, test her or meter her somehow and are suspect some kind of mutinous um, from her as well. 
So that's where the book starts. He's working in construction, encounters this character, D-Cell, and then the rest of the story involves their relationship and growing friendship. I'm hesitant to call it that, as she kind of tags along with him to uh, help him make good on the damage that she, that he's done to her and to her community. So she goes around basically live streaming him doing a number of things over the series of the issue. At the same time, we have a side story about Juggernaut's banishment to Limbo by Magic back in Uncanny X-Men number 21, which I haven't gone to check out yet, and how he kind of lost his armor, gave up his armor, um, but is clearly, you know, somehow regained his armor. And the comic also addresses, addresses that. In the second issue, which includes a cameo of Hulk, and, and this includes a caption that indicates that it took place before Immortal Hulk, Hulk number 30. An interesting kind of intertextual reference because Immortal Hulk number 30 happened quite a while ago, 10 to 15 issues ago. It's already been collected. Um, and so it happened a while ago, and maybe because of the pandemic and the changes in the publishing schedule, who knows? But, but that reference coming out so late indicates some kind of scheduling or, or publication snafu or, or staggering, in, in, in my opinion, because it seems that usually references like that happen in books that are a little closer to each other in, in real time. So in any event, he is going after wonderful two-page spread there with the Hulk. He's going after the Hulk with D-Cell's assistance and damage control because they think that they can, she can basically slow the Hulk down enough that, that he can be captured. And, and the fight is a challenging fight. Juggernaut is not enough. Um, so those of you who debate or bet on whether Hulk can beat Juggernaut, it looks like Hulk could beat Juggernaut. Um, but she's brought in, slows him down enough, so he's captured. Because he basically uh, is being taken to court as part of a class action suit um, by people that he's harmed um, through through his destructive ways. At the same time, we have Kane Marco several months ago going to Budapest to track down some information about the deposed deity Sitarak. We have a nice quiet moment in the courtroom in which citizens of the Marvel Universe are describing and detailing to the Hulk how he hurt them. He's taking it in stride, escapes, and then points his finger at the Juggernaut and says, basically, this is slightly hypocritical. Anything that you're saying about me could also be applied to him. Why are you not talking to him? And the Hulk's theory is that this is all just a... Uh, conspiracy involving the Roxxon Corp. He asks people in the courtroom if anyone works for Roxxon. Uh, Juggernaut apparently is currently in the employ of Roxxon, and so the Hulk suggests that it's part of a smear campaign. That takes us to the third issue, and the third issue uh, continues. Uh, another wonderful two-page spread with Spider-Man with the reference on the first page to being able to be stopped by the spider webs. Um, but Spider-Man doesn't actually appear. These are, these are in photos um, in which, as the court case unfolds, uh, some additional legal drama occurs. In North Korea, we have Kane Marco going to the forge of Sitarak. And so that plot thread continues. And he ends up meeting the host of Sidorak and is interested in obtaining the crimson fans of Sidorak. Wonderful fight scene with a female Sandman-like character named Quicksand who comes to get D-Cell under the employment of someone whose mind is being, who's controlling her mind. And, and that brings us to the end of the issue uh, where Arnim Zola, of all people, comes into play. And so a lot of fascinating stuff going on in this issue. We've got some Asgardian, Celestial, 
stuff going on with Sidorak and uh, Doctor Strange almost with the Crimson Bands of Sidorak. We've got Kane Marco, very much reminding me of a series of Amazing Spider-Man issues in which the Sandman is painted as a much more sympathetic character. Kane Marco coming across very sympathetically in this miniseries where he was kind of a joke and a buffoon before. Wonderful art by Ron Garney might replace kind of my vision of where I thought John Romita Jr. was going. Excellent, excellent art and a wonderful story by Fabian Nicieza giving a credibility and a seriousness to Juggernaut in a way that, that I didn't necessarily expect. And so a shame that there's only two more issues left in this series. Uh, Juggernaut has not had a lot of titles to himself. The only things I'm aware of are one-shots in the mid to late 90s. I think 97 and 99 each had a, a one-shot. Some reference in the past to um, the bands of Sidorak, and so I think this is maybe filling in some gaps that were left at the time. Um, but this makes me think that he can be included in the pantheon of the Marvel Universe in a more present way than he has been. Not just a uh, one-shot or one-joke wonder uh, villain for Spider-Man, which is, I think, where I first encountered him. I just want to check number one to see if there's a two-page spread. Like in the next two issues, there kind of is, punctuated by panels, but a two-page spread there just of Juggernaut himself. So it kind of continues some interior design consistency issue to issue. Um, so a wonderful read. And so five issues, it'll be collected, I'm sure, um, but I wouldn't wait. I would I would pick up the issues the issues now because they're worth reading. And and the way these first three issues have gone, um, there it's gonna it's gonna end with a bang for sure. Um, but wondering where they're gonna go with him next. Wondering how it's gonna tie in. There's opportunity for bigger things here, um, and just a fascinating reintroduction of a character, a villain. Uh, that could lead to, to bigger and better things and really interested in seeing where that goes. So Juggernaut, one to three, almost done with a five-part miniseries published by Marvel, November, December, and January of next year already. And uh, who knew that Juggernaut could be so cool? If you haven't checked it out, be sure to do so. All right, I'll see you next time.